You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. Because it matters. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody is having a great day. It's hump day, so you know what that means. It means it's the walk of shame day, although we did not lose this week. The Eagles won. They're four and two, and I have to go on the Dan Celio show, which of course will pain me severely. And I have to say that today is not starting off good. It's not starting off good. Um, the signs of the problems are all around us. And I have to say, how much is enough? You know what I'm saying? How much do you really need? The Dallas Cowboys are worth over $10 billion, $3 billion more than any other franchise. Clearly, the Joneses are winning at marketing and making the Dallas Cowboys that team that everybody wants a piece of. How much more of that do you need? I'm going to be honest with you because it seems like when you hear about people that are rich, you know, somebody's got 10, 15, 20. 50, 75, 100 billion dollars. That's more money than they can, they, you know, that they, they'll ever be able to spend. And they're still out there trying to grab every nickel and dime. That greed, it's like at some point, you're worried about the money so much that life passes you by. The things that are actually important get lost because the only thing that's driving you is freaking money. And maybe that's why I'll never be a rich person. Because, see, I'm trying to enjoy my life, the relationships that I have uh, with people and the things that I do, my family and things like that. That that's the important thing. <clears throat> that's not the driver. And maybe that's why we're broke-ass media. But you see this whole thing with Jerry, when he says stuff like, we couldn't afford Derrick Henry is the stupidest thing you ever heard. Because I thought it was about winning, but apparently it's not. So there's an article out this morning about, um, about the Cowboys and their tours. You know, uh, I don't know if you've done the tours and stuff. You know, it used to be it was just the stadium. And then, of course, they built the star. You know, when they opened up the star, I don't know if it's still, uh, if they still do this or not. But at the star, you have, um, you can pay basically to live, you know, the buildings around the star and things like that. But be part of the training facilities where you can train with the players that are rehabbing. And if you go on the tour of the star, I was fortunate enough, shout out to Uncle Phil, because when we were down um, working on, on Stuart Morse's house, he set up a tour for, for us to go. So all of us were able to go to the star and it's, it's a beautiful facility. You know, you see the, the, uh, the draft room and things and you can rent it out. You can rent that space out. You go through, you see all the trophies, all the rings and everything. You know, you, you, you see the headquarters of the Cowboys. You can go into the cafeteria. Now, when we were there, um, we couldn't do the tour of the locker room because Michael Gallup was rehabbing for his knee and stuff. So it was good that we didn't go in and disturb that. But you see the, the weight room and everything else. And, you know, every time somebody comes through there, it's another 40 you know, $50 and all that for your private tour and things, making more money. So what has come out is sources close to the Cowboys Leadership Council. Now, th this is Jordan Lewis's response about these tours and things where, you know, you're sitting here working out, 
you know, and you got the glass where, you know, you're like a goldfish and people are tapping on the glass and like, hey, you know, selfies and things like this. And so it does make it a little bit harder when people are distracting you while you're working out. Jordan Lewis said this. It's Jerry's world. That's not our job to go out there and tell Jerry what to do with his organization. Our job is to go out there and win games regardless of if you see tours as a distraction like the media or anybody else. We got to go do our jobs regardless. Regardless of the circumstances. So we can't look at it like that. He's made a multi-billion dollar organization like this. It's not going to stop. Got to get used to it. And the Cowboys are the only club that offers fans tours of the training facility. Some players find a distraction and exhausting to see random people daily tapping on the weight room windows. And some wonder if the tours are getting in the way of winning. Yeah. And this is where you start, and this was per uh, Kalen Collar. Um, the Cowboys Leadership Council has had discussions about the disturbances that the tours cause, but believe there's nothing they could do because Jerry doesn't see it as a potential distraction and has an effect on the on-field performance of the team. The bottom line is that ever since we've been involved in doing it for the last 20 years, uh, we're six winning team in the NFL. Um, so there's that. So they're basically saying we're the fourth winningest team since 2016 that they started doing it. So Jerry says, I, I don't see a problem with that. But here's where I'm going to go ahead and I, I'm gonna, uh, th this popped up yesterday on Instagram and reminds you some of the things that Jerry does that you wonder if it's about winning or about the show. We know there are curtains at AT&T because they use them when they have concerts because they don't want to interfere with the show. Now, if you've got a quarterback who's trying to throw to his receivers, and we know during the Lions game that Jalen Tolbert lost a pass in the sun, and it looks like Dak Prescott did, you have to think that what the Cowboys are doing is affecting the play on the field. Let's go to that tape. Wow. Cowboys versus Lions, you probably noticed a sun glare beaming down onto the field. A huge window on one side of the end zone allows sunlight to make its way in and visibly affect the game and the players. There are curtains installed in the $1 billion stadium to conceal and hide the glare at times when the sun strikes. But Cowboys owner Jerry Jones refuses to do anything about it. In a 2022 interview, Jones said he's not going to put the curtains down since conditions and elements have always been a part of football and it's not something high on his priority list. If you watch Cowboys versus Lions. Yeah, so we've got that going on. So, and you start thinking about it, that, that we've had games. We've had games that we know that um, it's affected us. Okay, we know that we've had games that it's affected us. Yet Jerry Jones, no, nah, we're not going to do anything about that. You know, this is where you realize what Jerry Jones is doing. And, and as the Cowboys leadership council says that, you know, there's just like people doing tours in the weight room and things where they are literally like, you know, a, a, a zoo yet. You're going to the zoo. We're going to the zoo to check out the animals while they're training that Jerry Jones does not stop these things because it continues to bring in more money. And I dare say a distraction. If you're talking about somebody tapping, on the glass while you're lifting weights as a distraction. What do you think it is landing a helicopter in the middle of practice, Jerry? This is why the Cowboys, one of the many reasons why the Cowboys don't win. Jerry loves the controversy. Jerry loves the publicity. Jerry wants to make money. And at this point at 82 years old, where he's got a 300 and 30 foot long yacht. It's the length of a football field. He's got a his and her helicopter. He's got the Dallas Cowboys at $10.3 billion. That making an extra $40 per fan going through there 
Is that better than actually trying to win a freaking Super Bowl? Because it seems like that's where the importance is of being in the limelight and things, as opposed to focusing on what everybody else is trying to do, which is win football games. And here we are with Jerry Jones, and, and I have to say, I've met Jerry Jones many, many times at the NFL Commissioner's Party and things, and he's been very gracious, although I do remember the first time that I met him, my wife introduced him and said, this is one of the biggest cowboy fans out there. This is where all his money goes. He, he, and, and as I reached out my hand to shake his hand, he went like this, give me some more of that money, give me some more of that money. True story. I don't understand this. I don't understand this. That you will put more time and effort out of shaking every nickel out of the fans than you will actually focusing in on your team getting wins. And that's a fact. That's a fact. And so as other teams are looking around and saying, how can we make the team better? You got the Jets out there trying to salvage the season and, and understanding that Aaron Rodgers is not long for the NFL. Let's go get Devontae Adams to try and see if we can salvage the season. Let's fire the coach to see if we can get somebody else to give us a better result. As the Buffalo Bills realize that maybe um, Stephon Diggs was a distraction in things and we're going to try it without him, they recognize we need another playmaker. They go out and get Amari Cooper. As um, Kansas City has had injuries to their receiving core, they go out this morning and they make a trade for DeAndre Hopkins. The Cowboys, when they lose all their pieces, they sat around last year, the last trade deadline, saying, we're waiting for people to call us. And instead of at least... Having a conversation. Jerry, you handpicked the marble from Italy for the stadium. You paid that much attention to every detail about where every TV would be located, the 3,000 plus ones, including in the holding cells under the stadium that have televisions. But you can't take enough time to investigate every rock to overturn to try and win. And some of these rocks aren't very hard to, to turn. Some of them are just picking up the phone and having a conversation with guys like Derrick Henry. And seeing, how can I make this work? Because, see, Jerry, when you bought the Dallas Cowboys, as you put it, an organization that was losing... $2 million a month. As you go and tell the stories of this, how you basically begged, borrowed, and stole the money to get it together to buy the Dallas Cowboys. You did everything you had to to make it work. You aren't doing the same to make this team work to win a championship. You, being the smart man that you are, can't honestly look at this team and say we have what we need right here right now you can't you can't say that we're doing all we can to win when our players are literally playing into the sun you can't say we're doing everything we can when the players are admitting they have a hard time focusing on getting better. You can't say we're doing everything we can when you land your helicopter in the middle of practice on the practice field. And we as fans, we can't say those guys aren't good enough. They suck. When they're not giving every opportunity to succeed. So this morning, I'm kind of pissed, you know. Um, I'm not going to say that, that DeAndre Hopkins is the answer, but I do know that a couple years ago, 
DeAndre Hopkins was literally begging to come to Dallas. Literally begging to come to Dallas, working out with Des Bryant. Literally said, what's up, Dallas? What's up? We had Von Miller, who was working out, of course, with DeMarcus Ware, saying, Cowboys, call me. We had Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry, who bought another house in Dallas, basically saying, Cowboys, give me a call. I want to play for you. And we say, no, they're too expensive. Or, or, or worse yet, because it, it, it didn't get any better by, by Jerry changing his tone, saying he doesn't fit what we're doing. I don't know what it is that you're doing, Jerry. I'll be 100% honest with you. I don't know what it is you are doing. Because it ain't about winning Super Bowls. I can tell you that. It's about making money. So... Let's listen to how the rich get richer this morning with DeAndre Hopkins. Over here, and we begin the hour with guys. breaking. Guys. 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 guys, they're here. Uh, uh, they they here. Yeah, here we go. Shefty Bomb, ladies and gentlemen. Shefty Bomb, Adam Schefter reporting the Titans and Chiefs are finalizing a trade that will send five-time Pro Bowl wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins to Kansas City. The Titans will receive a conditional fourth-round pick in the trade, which is expected to be completed today. Kmart, obviously, the world is working the phones here. Any yeah. any details you can fill in for us here on this? Uh, as of right now, listen, it's a, fourth condition, it's a conditional fourth-round pick. We knew the Kansas City Chiefs. It's Super Bowl or bust for them, right? We understand that this is... When you have Rasheed Rice injured, when you have uh, guys on the roster that aren't contributing to the way that you expected them to in the wide receiver room, they had to make a move. Um, I thought Cooper Cup might have made sense here, but I like this move. Listen, the Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes, give him anything, and he can make something special out of it. Well, so the, the question about DeAndre Hopkins is not how great he's been. The mm. question is how great he is. We have yeah. our wide receiver in the house today, Andrew Hawkins. Hawk, what does D-Hop have left? Is it... It, is his addition enough to put this team back where it's been the last couple of years? I, I think in some ways it's an upgrade from some of the other veteran receivers they've signed, like McCole Hardman, Juju Smith-Schuster, Hollywood Brown even. I think what DeAndre Hopkins provides to Patrick Mahomes in the intermediate portion of the field does give them the balance on the field, along with Travis Kelsey, to give him clear pictures. Like if you even look at what he did at Tennessee and you look at just the incompletions, a lot of that was not the fault of his own. He still has a lot of juice left. And again, I, I think it's actually going to put this offense in a better light than we've seen it. So it's, I feel funny asking you this question. Does this put Kansas City? Because they're unbeaten. Right? Right. So we talk about the Chiefs like they were a team in trouble when the reality is they are the only team in the NFL without a loss. But I think we all saw the obvious flaws and we knew they needed to make a move. Is this move the one they needed to make? I mean, I think it definitely helps them. It doesn't change their team, though. They're still a very defense-centric team. I think the way that DeAndre Hopkins helps is he's going to move the change. You see the highlights here. There's not a bunch of big play explosive like don't get excited. We're not going back to the Chiefs of old where they're going to score 40 points a game. But we will be able to give that defense a lot more rest, uh, move the chains more, maybe more effective in the red zone. You see DeAndre Hopkins yeah. is not creating a whole bunch of separation. He's finding holes in zones and winning contested catches, which is incredibly useful. But this is not going to revamp their offense. This takes them from, in my opinion, it makes them the AFC favorite again. Right? We had seen Baltimore close the gap. We had seen teams coming after him. We saw Buffalo make the move with, with Cooper to put themselves back in that type of conversation. For, for the Kansas City Chiefs, this puts them back, in my opinion, as the AFC favorite. The last two games in particular, you saw Mahomes pressing. Right, He presses early, and, and it is a different mindset when you're trusting your defense to be the, the, you know, the, the anchor of your football team. It's hard. When you're talking about a possession receiver, Big body, knows how to use his body. Mm -hmm. He becomes another version of Travis Kelsey, mm -hmm. but they can use him in different areas. Then it, allow, it allows Worthy. Now you bring Pacheco back. You have you have enough guys in the mix to make this offense explosive. Will he be the explosive piece? No. But will the other pieces be allowed to be more explosive? I think it forces defenses to play it different and allows Mahomes to prosper. What you want is to make defensive coordinators sit there and think, okay, who do we have to figure? Who do we have to at least acknowledge on the field? It is another key veteran, 
a good weapon, and that's why you have the, the young guys with the speed and everything around him. Yeah, it, it right sizes the weapons that you have. Yeah. He's not the catch and run guy. We have McCole Harmon for that. He's not the deep threat. We have Xavier Worthy for that. Right. Even the load that you take off of Travis Kelsey yeah. now allows him, when you see that zone coverage on third down, you can't double Travis right. because DeAndre Hopkins is right here. That's right. What a week we've had for receiver trades, and it's not done yet. As, as Kmart just mentioned, the name Cooper Cup is out there. The- Okay, so again, I I I, I have no um, thoughts that the Cowboys are actually going to make a move. I, I honestly don't believe the Cowboys will do anything. I it, 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 we always get excited, we get teased uh, about players that want to come here and about trade scenarios. Anytime any big name player is always you know, on the market, it's always the Cowboys are, you know, betting odds for, for Vegas because they know we're suckers about making money. And, and, you know, this kind of goes back to the whole thing about Jerry Jones, you know, the gambling money, of course, is more money for the NFL. So getting the whole, get, getting us all excited about this, that, and the other is just making more money for the Cowboys. It's basically the money driving machine for the NFL. It just is. The Cowboys have not done shit, but yet they are the most watched team in the NFL. And Jerry does things. Instead of saying, you know what, we've got injuries to our receivers. Or maybe that, you know, maybe Brandon Cook's gotten old, you know, in the time that he's gotten here. He is, you know, not a young guy. Instead of trying to make a move to prop us up, Jerry, remember a couple weeks ago? When Brandon Cooks went down, Jerry Jones was up there saying, you know, I can't wait. I can't wait to see Ryan Fonteroy. I can't, you, you know, when he gets his first catch, he gets his first catch. Oh, man, he's got some Des Bryant in him. And so there's an article out this morning about basically the midway point or, or just before the midway point ranking the draft class that we have this year. Mind you, my, my my buddy Cooper BB is an A plus. Uh, he's the highest rated rookie that we have. Ryan Fonteroy. Here's here's actually what they they say about Ryan Fonteroy. Fonteroy, who we've been sold that he's got Des Bryant ish in him, and he can't wait to get him out on the field. Like you know, he's gonna be you know the the season saver. Six round pick from South Missouri State. Ryan Fonteroy got his chance last week. He probably fumbled it away, too. Getting activated for the first time just two weeks ago, Fontaroy saw no targets and 10 snaps in the win against the Steelers. He finally saw a target last Sunday against the Lions. Fontaroy caught the pass for a 12-yard gain and then fumbled the ball away to the Lions. That's probably not the best way to get another throw in your direction, nor does it bode well for the rest of Fontenroy's rookie campaign. So that was Jerry Jones' solution for saving the season is, you know, we believe in our guys, as Stephen Jones says, you know, we're going to take a six-round pick. And, and, and let, me, let me be clear here. Ryan Fontenroy, no disrespect to you, man. I, I'm not putting this on you. OK, uh, d- deal with the message, not the messenger. The reality is, is Ryan Fontaroy may become a great receiver. He may, given time and experience. The thing is, is you're not given the time in to, to get the experience to be good. You're thrusted in there and you're now sold as the savior of the season. We lose a valuable starter, a veteran starter, and the solution is we're going to go to the six-round pick, rookie, who's still wet behind the ears, and he's going to save us. And that's the same thing that we did last year when we lost linebackers. It wasn't new that in the middle of the season, all of a sudden, oh, my God, we don't have linebackers. You lost Agent Zero in training camp, and you had Leighton Van Der Esch, who's had an injury history, basically him and Damone Clark are the only two linebackers left. And you should know that Van Der Esch is always one hit away from injured reserve. And you didn't do anything about it other than, it's okay, 
we'll take a safety and we'll make him a linebacker. Now, I always get, you know, Dak Prescott sucks. He's not the guy. Well, you know what? If what y'all are saying is true, that it's just the quarterback that succeeds, then why is it Pat Mahomes needs to have DeAndre Hopkins come in? Why is it that Josh Allen needs to get Amari Cooper right now? Why is it that Aaron Rodgers needs Devontae Adams? Aren't those all elite quarterbacks? That their job is just to elevate everybody else? That it doesn't matter about the talent that you have? Why aren't they turning to their six-round drafted wide receiver that's a rookie and saying, we're good. The Cowboys do all these things because of Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones, but it's only about making the money. It's not about winning the Super Bowl. And this is what really, literally makes you almost want to cry as a Cowboy fan. Because we as the fans have more desire and belief in wanting to win than the guy that owns it. That's the worst thing. That's the worst thing about being a Cowboy fan. Because you literally get emotionally involved. As I sit here and I look over, shout out to Aaron, at all of these bobbleheads, all of these great Dallas Cowboys players, as I get up every single day thinking about the Dallas Cowboys, planning, going to see the Eagles and Cowboys, and hell, the Eagles will probably mollywop us like everybody else has at AT AT&T and spending a boatload of money to do that. This is what hurts as a Cowboy fan is we are invested in the Dallas Cowboys winning when Jerry Jones is not. All right, good people. I've got work to go do, and uh, I'm going to go out in the sun, bake my head a little bit before I have to deal with Dan Salio and Philly 500. I know that uh, we'll get joked at. You know, we are a laughing stock. And deservedly so. Cowboys miss out again. And we have hopes and dreams, of course, of Cooper Cup. You know, that, that maybe the Cowboys are trading. Okay. It's just, sell, just making more money for the Cowboys is all it's doing. It's just making more talk on the airs. But none of that's going to actually happen because Jerry and Stephen Jones suck. Have a great day, good people. And um, I appreciate each and every one of you guys being here and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without...